Happy Poetry Friday! This week's poem is The Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock by T.S. Eliot. Let us go then, you and I, when the evening is spread out against the sky like a patient etherized upon a table. Let us go through certain half-deserted streets, the muttering retreats of restless nights in one-night cheap hotels, and sawdust restaurants with oyster shells, streets that follow like a tedious argument of insidious intent to lead you to an overwhelming question. Oh, do not ask what is it. Let us go and make our visit. In the room, the women come and go, talking of Michelangelo. The yellow fog that rubs its back upon the window panes, the yellow smoke that rubs its muzzle on the window panes, licked its tongue into the corners of the evening, lingered upon the pools that stand in drains, let fall upon its back the soot that falls from chimneys, slipped by the terrace, made a sudden leap, and seeing it was a soft October night, curled once about the house and fell asleep. And indeed, there will be time for the yellow smoke that slides along the street, rubbing its back upon the window panes. There will be time, there will be time, to prepare a face, to meet the faces that you meet. There will be time to murder and create, and time for all the works and days of hands that lift and drop a question on your plate. Time for you, and time for me, and time yet for a hundred indecisions. For a hundred visions and revisions before the taking of toast and tea. In the room, the women come and go, talking on Michelangelo. And indeed, there will be time to wonder, do I dare? And do I dare? Time to turn back and descend the stair with a bald spot in the middle of my hair. They will say, how his hair is growing thin. My morning coat, my collar mounting firmly to the chin, my necktie, rich and modest, but asserted by a simple pin. They will say how his arms and legs are thin. Do I dare disturb the universe? In a minute there is time for decisions and revisions, which a minute will reverse. For I have known them all already, I've known them all known the evenings, mornings, and afternoons. I have measured out my life with coffee spoons. I know the voices dying with a dying fall beneath the music from a further room. So how should I presume? And I've known the eyes already, known them all, eyes that fix you in a formulated phrase. And when I am formulated and sprawling on a pin, and when I am pinned and wriggling on the wall, then how should I begin to spit out all the buttons of my days and ways? And how should I presume? And I have known the arms already, known them all, arms that are braceleted and white and bare, but in the lamplight downed with light brown hair. Is it perfume from a dress that makes me so digress? Arms that lie along the table or wrap about a shawl. And should I then presume? And how should I begin? Shall I say, I have gone at dusk through narrow streets to watch the smoke that rises from the pipes of lonely men in shirt sleeves leaning out of windows. I should have been a pair of ragged claws scuttling across the floors of silent seas. And the afternoon, the evening, sleeps so peacefully, smoothed by long fingers, asleep tired, or it malingers stretched on the floor here beside you and me. Should I, after teas and cakes and ices, have the strength to force the moment to its crisis? But though I have wept and fasted, wept and prayed, though I've seen my head, grown slightly bald, brought in upon a platter, I am no great prophet, and here's no great matter. I've seen the moment of my greatness flicker. I've seen the eternal footman hold my coat and snicker. And in short, I was afraid. Would it have been worth it, after all? After the cups, the marmalade, the tea, among the porcelain, among some talk of you and me, would it have been worthwhile to have bitten off the matter with a smile, to have squeezed the universe into a ball, to roll it towards some overwhelming question, to say, I am Lazarus, come back from the dead, come back to tell you all, I shall tell you all, if one settling a pillow by her head, should say, that is not what I meant at all. It was not it at all. 
And would it have been worth it, after all? Would it have been worthwhile? After the sunsets and the dooryards and the sprinkled streets, after the novels, after the teacups, after the skirts that trail along the floor, and this, and so much more. It is impossible to say just what I mean. But as if a magic lantern threw the nerves and patterns on a screen, would it have been worthwhile if one settling a pillow or throwing off a shawl and turning toward the window should say, that is not it at all. That is not what I meant at all. No. I am not Prince Hamlet, nor was meant to be. I am an attendant lord. One that will do to swell progress, start a scene or two, advise the prince, no doubt an easy tool. Deferential, glad to be of use. Plotic, cautious, meticulous, full of high sentence, but a bit obtuse. At times, indeed, almost ridiculous. Almost, at times, the fool. I grow old. I grow old. I shall wear the bottoms of my trousers rolled. Shall I part my hair behind? Do I dare to eat a peach? I shall wear white flannel trousers and walk along the beach. I have heard the mermaids singing, each to each. But I do not think that they will sing to me. I have seen them running seaward in the waves, combing the white hair of the waves, blown back. When the wind blows the water white and black, we have lingered in the chambers of the sea, by sea girls wreathed with seaweed, red and brown, till human voices wake us. And we drown. This is a seriously fantastic poem. It starts with an epigraph, a quote from another piece of poetry. It is from Dante's Inferno, and it is from the character Guido de Montefeltro. Montefeltro thinks that Dante must be dead in order to be down here, and therefore his story will not go any farther than Dante's ears. But Dante is alive and is going to carry his story back up to the future. It's all about suppressing yourself and hiding yourself and not being brave enough to show who you truly are and to truly stand up for what you truly are. Poor pathetic Prufrock throughout this poem keeps thinking about drawing the moment to a crisis, about coming to terms with himself and actually saying something that matters. But instead, he constantly covers it and makes excuses, and he's afraid of the way people will react to him. One of the great things about Eliot is all the illusions he uses. There are so many fantastic illusions, like the illusion of John the Baptist, the prophet, whose head is upon a platter. Lazarus, come back from the dead, who knows the afterlife. And Prufrock says, I'm no Lazarus, I'm not good enough for this. And when he finally convinces himself that he's too pathetic to actually ever speak up and actually say what he thinks or feels, he compares himself negatively to Prince Hamlet. No, I am not Prince Hamlet, nor was meant to be. I am an attendant lord, one that will do to swell a progress, start a scene or two. He compares himself, instead of Prince Hamlet, to some sort of foolish lord. Like the character Polonius in Hamlet, who is kind of a buffoon and who talks a whole lot, but who also is very duplicitous. The funny thing is, the whole poem, Prufrock is waffling in indecision. That's really his big problem. And ironically, in Hamlet, Hamlet's problem is also one of indecision. Prufrock is not the hero of his own story. It's interesting how many times he talks about things in parts. Instead of seeing a whole picture, he sees fragments of things. Instead of comparing himself to a crab scuttling across the floors of silent seas, he compares himself to a pair of ragged claws. He measures out his life in such tiny spoonfuls that he can never even see a complete picture. He never feels whole here. And when he looks at the people around them, all he sees are their arms or their eyes. Poor, frightened Prufrock, too afraid to even look at the world around him fully or to accept himself as a whole person. And yet he has these wonderfully rich feelings, if only he would express them. So don't be like Prufrock, as beautiful as this poem is. Go out and actually live life and appreciate the beauty all around you. I'll see you next week. In the meantime, you can click on one of the links over here or subscribe. And next week, I'll have a haircut, finally. I've been waiting for my hairdresser to have an opening. Rice cakes. Tasteless and bland, just like proof rock.
personality anywhere.